Okay. Something like that. So, um, we'll start the show. I'll introduce you officially. This is Avins O'Brien. She's been in the Liberty Movement for forever. And she's awesome on her own. (laughs) But she is uh, dating Jed Weiss, who a lot of people know from his wonderful photography. Photography Um, is amazing. And and she's uh, spent several years working for Peter Schiff. Uh, I've actually spent just a year working for Peter Schiff, just so you know. Just a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we'll get Um, into that. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, But anyway, I wanted to uh, talk first about your recent experience at Burning Man. That's becoming more and more of a thing. Like, I wasn't even really aware of it, you know, like before a few years ago, and um, and you just got back, and it sounds like you're like a veteran, like you go all the time. So, so tell me <laughs> about time. it. How was it? Uh, it was great. Well, it how was many, excellent. Um, how, it's, uh, I've been going for three years. So, um, okay. so yeah, it's actually not that long compared to most of the people I camp with. Most of the people I camp mm-hmm. with have been going for five, ten, or longer, and I know a lot of people who have been going for like since the mid nineties and they mentioned it to me and I do something, I go like, Oh, I was 10 that year. And they get freaked out. <laughs> um, but, but I think, I think I'm more of a veteran about it than, than someone who's been going for three years simply because uh, I'd heard about it long before and I hung out with a lot of people who've been. And so I was thoroughly prepared by the time I went. And, uh, and so every year is different. Every year is mm-hmm. awesome in its own way. Every year presents mm-hmm. its own challenges, and that's kind of what I love about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I read that you're spending a week or more, or is it just a week, in an environment that is doing its best to kill you. <laughs> it's true. It's, I mean, like, and, 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 I mean, it is generally, and also, like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, the whole thing runs about seven or eight days. And then some people go for longer. They can get an early access pass or stay for an extra day or two. And um, I, uh, I usually, the first year I went for, I think, seven, seven or eight days. The second year I went for, like, three. And then the next year, this year, I went for eight. So, um, uh, so it is definitely, like, it's, it's a desert that has, it's completely inhospitable. Like, it's, it's, it's horrifically hot during the day. It's, pretty cold at night. Um, there's no water anywhere. You have to bring all of your own supplies. And, uh, and there are dust storms and rain and hail. And yeah, it's, it's very apocalyptic. And um, I like that because I'm not, I'm not outdoorsy in any way. I do not like to camp. This is the only time I will take a tent out. Um, I, I, this is, it's not my thing, except that it's the only way to experience the whole thing and it like it that challenge to go like oh Avins isn't really into this but here we go like it, it it's the it's the it's the barrier that I have to cross in order to enjoy yeah. like the uh, overwhelmingly awesome experience that is Burning Man. Yeah, it's pushing yourself outside of your comfort level, which I'm very fond of doing. So, yeah. is it a music festival? What is it? Um, it's, I, I think most of all, it'd be an art festival, if anything, because mm-hmm. uh, Burning Man organization actually raises money for art grants, and uh, the art is the only absolute planned thing. So, uh, so someone designs the man, someone designs the temple, uh, and various art pieces that are going to be burned. Um, you can apply to Burning Man to get a grant. You can apply to Burning Man to... Um, to, um, to, to, to just put uh, um, art up that you've like, you know, paid for yourself, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there is some coordination there. And so in that way, art is probably the thing that is, it is the point. But, um, but there are musicians, I mean, this year, like Skrillex was there, (laughs) like um, uh, uh, the Crystal Method Mm -hmm. is there often. It's, I don't know, there's, there's, there's a lot of acts, musical acts uh, that you'll see there who they're not paid to be there officially. Like they're not paid by Burning Man Org. They're not, you know, it's it's not a music festival. You don't go like Coachella. It's it's uh, you just right. find out when things are playing and you go, and it's kind of cool. So, <laughs> well, you got me all interested. Maybe maybe at some point in the future I'll get the nerve up and I'll go with you. 
<laughs> it's, it's a blast. I get I get people interested every year. And here's the best part is that every year I come back and I convince like at least two people to come. And so every year I end up bringing, bringing a virgin. And so, um, uh, <laughs> on the drive into Burning Man this year, uh, the, the traffic was really bad. You know, there's like 65,000 people trying to get into a city in a single day on a two lane highway. And, um, and the traffic was terrible, and you can turn tune into the Burning Man radio station, and uh, and so they've got like guys who are in Burning Man right now, um, kind of reporting on on the word on the street. Oh, like this is what's going on tonight, and oh, this is how much traffic is out, outside the gate. And uh, the guy, the the announcer was really funny. He's like, you know, there's so much traffic, and there's a bunch of you listening who aren't even in in Burning Man City yet, or like Black Rock City yet. And, uh, and it's your fault. It's your fault, you know, because you go to Burning Man, you have a fucking awesome time, and then you you come back to the, the default world completely glowing, and you're like, Burning Man changed my life, it's amazing, and then everybody wants to go. And so, so you're the reason that all these freaking newbies Shut come up. out and buy up all our tickets and, and tea. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he has a point. Like he's he's absolutely yeah. right. Like there there are so many people that are now into Burning Man because somebody came back and said it's amazing. And so you know, word of mouth. But what do you do? Yeah. So, yeah. Stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. <laughs> Stop making videos that are amazing of the experience. Like um, every year, somebody posts an incredible video that I share on my wall, and tons of people go, Oh my god, that looks so cool. Let's do it. So cool. So, um, so what was the weirdest thing you saw while you were there? The weirdest thing. I think my definition of weird is different than other people's. Uh, <laughs> so like, so like my weird at Burning Man is probably going to be like a mother and father in normal clothes with a kid, you know, like with a small child, like in normal clothes, like just being normal people in the middle of the madness. Burning man. Um, yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah. That's not, that's not weird either. But, um, you know, it's, it's funny because like the things I think of as normal, like my friends, like I have this, there's this camp called Death Guild. They're friends, some of them are friends of mine. And uh, they run their own Thunderdome, like Mad Max, like a, a, like a fight dome. And so, so there are people just dressed up in crazy costumes and fighting with, with, uh, with like styrofoam swords. And uh -huh. I think that's perfectly normal. Like, I, I mean, and normal people would be like, fuck, that's weird. But that's, that's, <laughs> that's, you know, to me, I, I think it's the, 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 the weirdest thing about Burning Man is the, is the major dissonance that occurs when, when different groups who are like totally different vibes kind of come together. And so, you know, in one room you've got, like in one area, you've got people that are doing acro yoga and meditation and being all like spiritual, everyone's got like hippie dreadlocks and it's just really, really hippie-ish, you know, and really quiet and really just like, like serene and enjoying this experience in this very, very chill way. And then you've got like these punk kids over here, you know, listening to loud music and, and just, you know, mm -hmm. just being wild and crazy. And, and then you've got like some guy running around naked and then you've got some other person dressed up as like Jesus, like who the fuck knows? But <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's great because it's like this it's it's a it's a fun little like mishmash of people and everybody gets along and that's what's that's what's really cool is that you've got all these people with different interests and different different ways of experiencing this who are having who are having a great time. Well, that's peacefully. awesome. That's awesome. I'm sure it's not entirely peaceful. I'm sure there's got to be altercations. Oh, there are. I mean, and it's, I mean, it's a city of 60,000 people, you know, crime happens and not, not like, you know, there's, there's drug crime, which doesn't really count when you think about it. It's like, you know, victimless crime. Know. But I mean, the, yeah. the, I think there's, I think there's been like two murders on the playa in like 20 years or something. There's, there's been actual crime that's occurred. There have been rapes, there have been murders, there have been uh, very few, but um, there's like, there's been things that have happened, assaults, whatever. And, and the biggest thing is like when you put yourself in an environment, which is tremendously stressful, you, you will inevitably like fight with the, like a little bit fight with the people that you're with. So, you yeah, know, you're like gonna, you're, you're getting get into Burning Man. Out. You're like, oh man, I just had to like listen to you in the car for 
for eight hours. Like I hate you right now. And then you like, you, you know, you, you get to Burning Man and then you like unpack everything. And then you're in this stressful environment and you're just like, I spent 13 hours in the car with somebody and now they're right here in my space. And like, and so you might like, I, I think the first day I got into like, the first day I was able to just wander around, I just, I didn't hang out with the people I came with because I was like, uh-huh. you know what? We spent, we spent a lot of time in the car together. We can, we can, we can have our space so that we like each other yeah. again. And I didn't have, like, yeah, we didn't yeah. have a fighter <laughs> problem, but it d- certainly, it certainly helped to kind of like, um, kind of separate oneself. And that, that happens a lot, like in a st- high stress environment, like people have their fight. They, they say Burning Man will either make or break a marriage. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, let, let's move on to um, the Molyneux. You need to smooth the transition, that... girl. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but how can we, we wait, have... how can we make Burning Man connect to Molyneux? I have a hmm. really good way. Okay. 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 So I wrote that article, which you'll probably talk about in a second with a little intro, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna I wrote that article mm-hmm. on Monday, um, mm-hmm. on, on Monday, the whatever date that was. Um, yeah. And I left for Burning Man on Saturday. So, yeah. so, yeah, uh, about, so there was, there was, yeah, I had five days like, of like, experiencing whatever happened as a, as a result yeah. of it. And then I just disappeared for a month, for, for like 10 days and I had no mm-hmm. idea what I was going to come back to. And cue your story about my Molyneux article. Oh yeah, let's hear about it. Why? Why did you decide to write this article in the in the first place? Was it your idea, or or was it like something that signed to you, or what? Oh, it wasn't it? Definitely wasn't assigned to me. Um, I I mean I've been aware of Molyneux for a while. I, I there were some videos years ago that I really enjoyed and passed on to friends about anarchy and free markets and stuff like that. And so I've been aware mm-hmm. of him and he's just kind of been on my peripheral, like, you know, you know, whatever, he's some guy who makes videos and, and some of them are good. And, and, uh, and, and I've become aware that some of them, like every once in a while, someone would send me a video. I'm like, what do you think of this? And I'd be like, I'm not commenting on this because I don't want to draw attention to it. Like it's, it's like, it, it didn't make me happy to, to, to see, uh, things that you know people were just gonna then spread out into the uh, into the internet, and so I basically mm-hmm. just uh, purposefully kind of didn't talk about it. And then Polly Doyle, I think, um, wrote that BuzzFeed article, which I actually tried to look up before the show started, and um, and it was taken down from BuzzFeed because of a complaint filed. So uh-huh. um, I don't know the story there, but uh, apparently it was taken down by BuzzFeed community. Uh, and um, and I read it, and I mean, I definitely I'd seen some of the same things. I definitely like agreed with aspects of the article, but it was it was a hit piece, and it was and it didn't like it it didn't even bother to to point out like you know here's why he has such a following and like why he's popular and what he's done that's good. It basically mm-hmm. just went. It was just very negative, and and so I shared it on my wall. And when I shared it on my wall, I wrote like a little intro paragraph. And it was on, I was on mobile actually at the time. I literally like shared it on my phone and, and I'm like typing up this, this introductory like three paragraph commentary saying that I wish this was more balanced. I wish that like, I wish that, that we didn't have to do hit pieces because, you know, like when people have, like there's, there's a very complicated story here. And I think that, you know, like. It's, it's possible to be fair and then come to a conclusion and that conclusion may be negative, but like instead mm-hmm. it just looks like you hate this person and you're trying to get other people to do so as well. And so I, I wrote that like bit and people were like, wow, that was really, that was really thoughtful of you. And so I asked Gina, my uh, editor and the creator of Thoughts on Liberty, I asked her if, if I drafted up my little opinion piece into something a little bit bigger and added some links and talked about in a little bit more in depth if uh, if she'd like to publish it on Thoughts on Liberty. And she was like, absolutely. And so, um, so yeah, so I basically, I worked on it that weekend. I watched more Molyneux videos than I ever thought possible. And that was what I came up with. <laughs> yeah, it, it does have a very, um, I think, balanced and fair tone to it. I mean, what you wrote is definitely not a hit piece, but I know you've, you've got some... Uh, uh, pushback on it. Some people acted like it was a hit piece. Uh, wh- what's been the the fallout for you? Like, what's been the reaction um, from where you sit? 
Um, well, I mean, yeah, a couple people definitely treated it as a hit piece, and 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 um, from what I I got, I got a lot of friend requests uh, suddenly. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was that was entertaining. I, I got an email from Wait. Gina right after it published, uh, an hour later, telling me that I uh, I broke the website. So that was fun. I saw that. Um, I saw that. So that was thing. It, it garnered a lot of attention, a lot of hits, and a lot of interest. So um, I I had and very I had very minimal awareness of of Molyneux really. Bef I mean, I, of course, I knew who he was, but I just hadn't really paid much attention. Um, mm -hmm. But then I, I read your article, and I was like, oh. Yeah, what what is this all about? This is interesting. And then you <laughs> maybe not entirely in it. To make up your own mind. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, I think the the most interesting thing was um, I've actually been following uh, Stefan Molyneux's Facebook page for a long time. I've never been friends with him. I've never like communicated with him, but um, but I have been like a follower on his Facebook page so I could see his updates because sometimes they're interesting and I suddenly found myself blocked like I've never had an interaction with the man whatsoever and suddenly I was like oh I can't see his page anymore I'm blocked and uh, and so <laughs> so I was like all right well okay not friends with Stephen Molyneux and then uh, and then yeah for the most part the most of the people that have reached out to me have been really uh, really awesome, really positive. There's been a, a slew of emails from people who have then told me their story and their experience with FDR and uh, Freedom Mind Radio. And um, and so a lot of people have started telling me like, oh, thank you for writing about the cult. And I was like, I didn't write about what? <laughs> like, and so there's, there's been kind of a, a, a slew of people telling me their story and being like, share our story. And I'm like, I I'm not qualified for this. <laughs> so they called it a so, cult. And mostly they did. <laughs> a number of people what do have you, done so. What do you think? Do you think it's a cult? I Is it cult ish? I think that I think that someone who studies cults would have a better more informed opinion about that kind of thing. I I'll be honest, I haven't spent enough time like hanging out with hardcore FDR people to know their side and if they go no like Stefan's really cool and like and and tells us all that we should you know try to patch things up with our family before we defu them or or or, yeah. or anything else like I haven't spent a lot of time listening to people who go oh Stefan's great I've listened to a lot of people on the fence I've listened to a lot of people who are generally positive towards him but not uh but not part of like his site and like in his inner circle and then I've listened to a lot of people because because they became available to me I've listened to a lot of people tell me really crappy things about their experiences either with family members who do food or their own experiences um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, maybe like maybe we should that. explain really briefly um, just in case someone hasn't read the article what defu is um, uh, defu well uh, foo family of origin um, Stefan Molyneux seems to, um, in my opinion, you you might uh, phrase it differently, but in my opinion, it seems like he can almost always find abuse in your past, and he, he he's actually stated that 90% 90, 90 of parents um, throughout history and currently are terrible parents and abusive, and so he has this way, and, and he would probably deny it, but... Um, a lot of people have had the experience where they've been pressured into uh, cutting off all contact with their family of origin, um, wh which is where we get into the the cultish aspect. Because then, of course, all they all they have left is the uh, the social network surrounding uh, free domain radio, the chat rooms, and whatever that becomes their their family of choice. Uh, and, I also and find that, that sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just I also find that then it combines with, and this is just stuff that people have told me from this aspect. It's it's, it's your say. It's it's not you know my experience with it. But people have told me that after they they remove themselves from their family of origin, they remove themselves from their support network because their support network was either allegedly abusive or doesn't see eye to eye with them on various things. They then you know go into the free domain chat rooms and the and the the forums or whatever it is and 
And then when they are kind of, let's say, halvesies on an issue or feeling like, oh, well, I'm not really like 100% in agreement with the group about this thing, they're more pressured to, to adopt a particular viewpoint. And, and if they don't, they don't have anywhere else to turn. They don't have like, they don't have the support network that they previously had. And so they find themselves kind of pressured into, into adopting a particular point of view, um, which it's, I think is kind of problematic. Yeah, and it's kind of odd for uh, uh, the libertarian movement because we pride ourselves on being so open-minded and uh, our principles are just very basic and it's sort of a live and let live philosophy. So how do you come up with all of these rules? And, and um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's very strange. Uh, I've listened to quite a bit of, of Molyneux since then just out of curiosity and one thing that I find particularly odd is like the the advice portion of his of his call in show where he's sort of become the self appointed Dr. Laura of an anarcho capitalist. It's just it's just odd. Um, but I, I maybe I'm just jealous. Maybe I, since I've always wanted an advice show, <laughs> maybe I'm just jealous <laughs> that you everybody should, asks you should me. create a different one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could give better advice than Molyneux. Maybe that's really my problem with the advice stuff. Well, see, just, it's just <laughs> see, then you make you make an advice show, and then the market decides, right? <laughs> okay, I have to think about that. Maybe I could maybe I could get a cultish following too. That's really what it is. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I don't want to be on video. <laughs> kidding. Totally kidding. Um, yeah, Frank is saying uh, you should probably have Molyneux on. I'd love to talk to Molyneux. You, you totally should. I, I just, I don't want to be there, but you can be there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. This is the only time I'm doing a video interview. I'm not, I'm not, joining, a, I'm not joining a guest on the next one. <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, oh, the, the thing is, I, I've heard people complain about interviewing Molyneux, and then all of a sudden he starts to psychoanalyze them. I don't want him anywhere near psychoanalyzing me because I'm <laughs> I'm fine, and and he'd probably reduce me to tears and convince me that I had an abusive childhood, which I didn't. Of course, we, we all did because you know because we all did um, rules. Um. <laughs> No, I mean, he is, he is yeah. okay, I'd like to point out, he's also tremendously articulate and tremendously uh, eloquent. So he'd probably yes. come on and spend part of it being tremendously charming and tremendously like, oh, I got no, no problem with that. Because there are plenty of his videos that I'm like, oh, yeah, like, I totally see the power. Like, he just explained that really well. He's, he's tremendously articulate. It just then yeah. he talks about things that you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he goes off into very odd places like recently he he uh said that all physicists were um like how did he put it and he's he slammed physicists and i'm i'm still not particularly sure on why and somebody asked him you know what what's your problem with physicists you know a lot of them are government employees but why physicists in particular are are you angry at them and i happen to be married to a physicist so <laughs> i hear him say this You're and my ears go biased and you can't see the truth okay I'm totally biased. <laughs> I, 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 I am totally biased of course yeah I'm everybody's biased whether they admit it or not I just admit it mm -hmm. <laughs> no problem admitting that I'm biased um so what was his so, point on physicists uh he sort of talked around it and didn't really answer why physicists in particular were the subject of his ire he just he doesn't like neutron colliders and things. He thinks that philosophy is more important than, you know, those sort of scientific discoveries because who cares about outer space? <laughs> did he do Yeah. Did he do that article or did he do that 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 video in response to was it was it Neil deGrasse Tyson I think did a video where he said that um or did a did an interview where he said Maybe. that um, philosophy wasn't as important as like physics and and like now I kind of Maybe. wonder, like I, I, didn't, I didn't see the context of the video, but now I remember oh. because I was like, why, why can't both things be important? Like, I know. Why, why <laughs> do we have to pick and choose? Yeah. 
One is important to you. One is important to you. What? Well, why do we need to fight? Well, you do what you do, and so. So it's the interesting thing is like okay, so let's say Neil deGrasse Tyson, for example, thinks that you know philosophy is a waste of time, and we need to focus on physics or cosmology or whatever you know his his, uh, his stuff is. Um, uh, like I can understand him saying that and being like, oh, we need to focus on these things. But Stefan Molyneux is a libertarian and. And, you know, he can definitely prioritize one over the other himself, but the idea that he would say that other people should do the same is kind of funny because if you believe in markets, if like you believe in like free markets and freedom and, and all these other things and you espouse the, 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 the benefits of them all the time, the idea is that if someone focuses on uh, philosophy and someone else focuses on physics and someone else focuses on, you know, all the different aspects of life, we, 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 we then have people creating value that they can trade for other value and they can learn about things from each other and and someone can focus on the crap I don't care about and other people can focus on, you know, on bettering the stuff I do and ta-da, that's the, that's the free world, right? That's the idea. Yeah. So it's funny to hear Molyneux like claim priority that might apply to other people. All of us have priorities in this world, like, of course, but <laughs> why would you tell other people what their priorities should be? <laughs> Oh, oh, he loves doing that. He loves doing that. that that's that's what sort of irks me about his uh, advice. Like when he when people call in and he psychoanalyzes them and gives them advice, it, it, sometimes it, it seems like his, his whole attitude is just really sort of crappy <laughs> about all that. But um, but that's like I kinda, like I say, I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous. Because <laughs> I totally. want people to call me and, and let me berate them for, you know, 30 minutes nonstop. No, that's not true. <laughs> you can, start, you can um, start with me. You can berate me. Tell me what sucks about me. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, that, that's the thing is I'm, I'm totally not qualified, but that doesn't seem to stop him either. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, one of the things that has really uh, – I think given him a lot of ne negative press in libertarian circles where he had a lot of friendlies even was uh, the DCMA takedowns of uh, people would post videos, that, several accounts, YouTube accounts that have been totally just taken down because sure, they, geez. yeah, yeah, in particular, um, I'm going to spell that in the chat so people know what we're talking about. But, you can go um, on Facebook and follow True Sheeps as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, oh my God, it's a she, right? comments alongside this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Very interactive. This person is anonymous. Oh, she, but they may be. She, oh, okay. That person. Don't know. Uh, but <laughs> she, she's not, they, It's not a big deal. I don't know. I don't. I don't. There are only know. so many women uh, in the movement. Then we can have like a witch hunt. <laughs> See, oh, that's so another good question. It. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll get to the witch hunt aspect of this because uh, I don't like witch hunts. I don't think it's a good thing. But we'll talk about this in a minute. But uh, what Molyneux or or his uh, henchman? I don't. His. Uh, producer, <laughs> henchman. That's not a good. That's not a good. Anyway, <laughs> but they the they Darth don't Vader believe in his Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I, I think I think that's the reputation he's gotten at this point because he went after anyway, all of these on. YouTube accounts and these videos because they were critical of Molyneux and they would they they were literally using Molyneux's own words. You know, and just in, in some cases, just putting Molyneux's words and, and snippets of his podcast up in a video just so that people mm -hmm. can see, you know, Molyneux really did say this. Here's his voice. You can hear it. This is not hearsay. Here he is. And yeah. and Molyneux, uh, who has come out against intellectual property <laughs> and copyright, has uh, yeah. sent the state, this the power of copyright, to silence his critics, and and that's really uh, rubbed people the wrong way. I think where Molyneux is concerned, because that that's that's that. not that's not kosher. That's not kosher, especially for ANCAPs. That's just not right. Um, I uh, to, I will agree to being tremendously annoyed that he removed all those videos as a like they filed the is it DMCA? 
uh, kind I'm of like the sure. D Digital, Digital Millennium DCA. Copyright Act, I think. Um, okay. But I uh, I know that um, him filing those uh, meant that all the True Sheep videos were taken down. And I I, I mean I I didn't link exclusively to True Sheep's videos, so I. I was able to, um, like, it wasn't all my links that were destroyed, but I had, I had like, 53 links in that article, and I literally, like, I, I had to go, and I was like, oh, dead link, oh, dead link, and I had to go and, and find, uh, someone made a mirror of the, of the uh, original YouTube channel, so I was able to mm -hmm. then link to the videos over again, but mm -hmm. I, I really don't appreciate having to do all that extra work. That was just very annoying. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that, that sucks. I had to pack for and Burning Man, and instead I spent an hour, like, Chasing links. Thanks. No, 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 that's not cool. Um, time is money. And, and you, <laughs> you really sort of have to 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 deconstruct Molyneux that way because his podcast can go on for three or four hours. So mm -hmm. if you want to quote him, you know, when he's talking about one subject in particular, you don't want to say, you know, listen to this podcast in hour two, minute thirty-five. <laughs> the, I mean. And he, he gets into some really crazy things, very anti-woman. I mean, stuff stuff that really just shocked and appalled me. Um, and I, I'm not really a feminist. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard to offend me. I had a very uh, traditional Christian upbringing, so I'm sort of used to <laughs> patriarchy. But, I mean, to, to hear it coming from an ANCAP is just, whoa. And and it just sort of takes your breath away. It's just like, oh, did he just say that? So, um, yeah, I I guess that make me uncomfortable <laughs> that he says. Yeah, it's just oh boy. Yes. Um, but I just called his staff person a henchman. So <laughs> I, I think I think I think the biggest issue too is that like there are things he says about women in general that just that that bother me, but. The thing that really drives me nuts is like that he assumes he knows other people's motivations for things. Yeah. And that drives yeah. me insane because it's like you don't like you're you're talking to someone who calls in and like and 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 you don't know their whole story. And sure, you're going to have them tell you part of it and then you're going to latch on to something and you're going to you're going to project your own fucking issues with your mother onto onto uh, this this thing and it, it drives me kind of crazy because I sit there and I'm like like you have no idea what someone's motivation is for something and and a lot yeah. of what he what he um uh, what he talks about is very much just assuming people's motivations and so it's one of the reasons I don't want to and especially in that article I think I said like I don't want to ascribe motivations to him that that like I don't want to speculate like I, I'm just simply saying here's what he says and I don't like it but um yeah. and and this mm -hmm. is why but I don't try to say like he wants all women to be this like I I don't I don't want to assume that because that isn't that's not con conducive that's what he does and so like why would I do that you know like I'm like I think it's it, intellectually disintegrated so why would I I, I do the same thing Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, there is an aspect to libertarianism uh, where there's a lot of infighting, and I get tired of it as much as anybody does, and I, I just, I get weary, and most of the time I just try to stay out of, you know, little mm -hmm. tiffs that personalities have back and forth. Agreed. Um, Agreed. So, so, yeah, I'm very, I'm very sensitive, as you are, to people in the movement being called out for no good reason or just, you know, nitpicked to death. But at the same right. time, um, <laughs> Reagan Rothbard over here asked, uh, how do we get more women? <laughs> um, I just, I totally here, just minimized and, my screen so I could see that too. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing is, is I, I think maybe this is part of how we get more women is, uh, when somebody is a, a raging misogynist, um, we call them out on it. You know, I, I, I think there's some things that are worth uh, calling people out on and not allowing uh, in the movement, like racism, homophobia, you know, hate of any kind. I mean, libertarianism is not about that. And when, when we have somebody rising to prominence and sort of speaking for the movement, you know, may, maybe... Mm -hmm. uh, 
there's there's a huge benefit to the movement of of not letting that stand and and calling them out on that. What 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 are your thoughts on that? Like wh when is it when is it good to call somebody out and when is it just infighting? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, it's funny too, as I was, I was totally just thinking of the the how do we get more women thing and realizing this is a horse we keep beating to death. But you know, how do we get more women? Yeah. Um, but like calling people out. Um, I think it's you know it's it's like everyone should be allowed in our movement, no matter how crazy their ideas are. But um, but the idea is like the the movement should reward people that have good ideas by by you know giving them more views or you know or buying their books or whatever whatever it is that they um, in in whatever way that we can give people social capital and currency in our movement. Um, you know anyone can exist in it, but the people that talk about you know like. I don't know, like not being, not being, let's say, misogynistic or racist or whatever else. I think, uh, you know, if we can, if we can find ways to, 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 um, kind of, like, not give those people attention, that would be good. Um, oh, so your question was, um, is is the difference the point in which we we're calling people out versus infighting? Yeah, I think that I mean, what one, if, what you if can they're already. What if they're already uh, getting a lot of attention, and and what if they're getting to the point where uh, people outside libertarian and ANCAP circles look to someone like Molyneux as, as someone who speaks for us. You know, right. at, at, I mean, where's where's the line where where that kind of gets to be a risk? I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I was trying to think about it this, this last couple of days. I've been like, where is that line? And I mean, you have to discover that line for yourself. It's not like someone gets to, you know, it's the nice thing about decentralized liberty is that we don't, we don't look to like a single source to decide that's the line, you know, is the line, you know, when we, you <laughs> I know, guess it's more people, of a rhetorical question, really. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. But yeah. like, but you know, the, the, um, you know, the line in which we, we protect people, you know, just because they, they have unpopular views, but maybe they're worth hearing or, or, you know, and, and, um, and, you know, not, not, you know, just not inviting, uh, versus the, the line where, you know, people, if people really, like, if someone were like beating their wife or, or, or committing some horrific, terrible crime, like we wouldn't want to protect them as a movement, right? Like hopefully, like hopefully we wouldn't do that. And yeah, so hopefully. you know, there, there, like there's a there's a good line there. But then where's the next line? There's the there's the line over where we at least you know kind of shame them for their views. Like you know, if if if, if shaming is a legitimate you know social action of basically saying like that's not cool, dude. You can't say that. Like um, you know, it's like we don't we don't censor them. We don't say that they can't. Um, they can't say those things, but we're not going to give them a platform. Call them we're out. We're not going to have them on our shows, our website. We're going to call them out. Yeah. Um, and I've seen people's views change. Like I've seen people's views evolve, and people and people. Um, I can't think of an example right now, but I swear I have. I have seen this. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I, yeah. But I think I think it's it's important to know that you know we're we're part of a movement that's that's you know it's it's. Oh, you know, it's over 40 years old, but it's still in its infancy and people are, are going to try on ideas for size and some of those ideas are going to be shitty and um, and we're going to have to kind of test them out and, and argue them and like and we're willing to argue about whether or not the state should exist in a, in a perfectly non-aggression principle society. But we're not willing to argue about whether or not like it's good to have views of women that see them as estrogen based parasites. Like, like why, why are we allowed to have that debate? Like, we, we, we have plenty of debate about, about, um, about where, you know, where the line lies in terms of anarchism or minarchism or, or any kind of complicated fucking stuff. But, but somehow when someone says, oh, but I don't like that he called women this, that suddenly, like, it's like, oh, you're infighting, you're, you're hurting the movement, you know, that person does plenty of good for the movement. It's like, yeah. So let's have them keep doing that and not do this. So there's a place for Molyneux if he will just play nice in the sandbox, maybe. I mean, to be fair, like, there are plenty of people that came into the libertarian movement. Like, there, there are some people, I don't even know if it's plenty. I, do, I don't know how many people were converted to libertarianism through Molyneux's videos. But those people, if they found Molyneux, found this idea, and then moved 
in and moved into the circle of liberty and like and and you know started working on a campaign that they care about or started you know going to conferences like freedom fest or students for liberty or whatever the hell it is if if they were brought into the major libertarian sphere through Molyneux's videos then he's done good things and that's that's not a bad you know like that's great i'm glad that he got people excited about uh about the movement. There are, there are videos of his that I would still to this day recommend to people. I just don't like to because I don't want them to click on his other videos and see the crappy things he says. Like, that's the problem. Is like, there's so many, like, I just want to isolate and be like, this video is great. Don't link on others. I mean, you can. But like, don't, don't, like <laughs> yeah. just, yeah. there's, a salt, there's a shaker of salt and just pour it on there before you do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, I mean, that's problematic because, I mean, turn the tables. If you were looking into a new idea of, you know, someone else's and they pointed you to a video where they had somebody saying something very clarifying and, and saying it well, and then they said, don't watch this other per this person's other videos, though, you know, because, I mean, you'd kind of, you'd be like, oh, that must be the the dark underbelly. That must be what they really think, you know. And and going back right. to uh, Reagan Rothbard's question, is how do you how do we get more women? Well, for one thing, we don't we don't call them estrogen based parasites. <laughs> and and <laughs> yeah, and uh, and, and yeah. Yeah, for one thing, uh, a lot of women don't like that, and that's a big turnoff. As much as there's things that he said that turns people onto liberty, you know, if, if we sort of give people a pass because they, they say good things, but then, you know, we let them turn off women because they're calling them nasty names, I, I don't know. Is it a net positive or a negative? It, it, I, I guess time will tell. Hey, my screen just froze, just so we know. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, but anyway, another one of my awesome. Right. Oh, okay. So my screen just froze for part of that, just so you know. <laughs> I, I, I heard I heard okay. your net positive versus ne net negative thing, but I didn't hear all of it. But I know, I know where you stand on this, so we're good. <laughs> but I totally, I probably was just looking like an idiot going, like, happens. my screen isn't working. It's, um, it, it, it's an infant technology, I think. I think it'll get better with time. Um, I'm it not does. sure if we shouldn't just not give him the attention that E-Prof is saying. Mm -hmm. um, Matt says we have to get Molyneux on. How many <laughs> negatives are in that <laughs> sentence right there? Uh, let's see, what else are they saying in chat? Um, we have to get <laughs> Molyneux on Liberty. It's only because it's only of the new eyes he brings to the site. Well, <laughs> Wait, yeah. Is, Malinu is on Liberty.me. Like he, as far as I know, he's been on plenty of shows, so it's not like he's lacking, uh, like a bringing a following here. Um, uh, I love. It's such a shame because he speaks so clearly about the ideas of liberty. That's absolutely true. Reagan Rothbard, thank you. Um, for stating that, because it is, he's tremendously eloquent. Like, I know people who say, like, I'll listen to anything he says, at least consider anything he says, because he says it so eloquently, and it's absolutely true. Um, but unfortunately, some of the things he says, says aren't so good. I don't know, maybe <laughs> Even he gets, if they're to, eloquent, maybe they're he not gets to drinking, or I don't know. But I know these things, I, I think they're, like, buried deep in the podcast, and you wouldn't even know about them, because most people... I don't know that any anybody but the like most committed followers of Molyneux can listen to him for three hours and still be paying attention. So Yeah, I uh, tried to I did some of that. I listened to some of his stuff for yeah. way more hours than I wanted to. <laughs> I spent a weekend on it. Like yeah, I have other things to do. Judd and I hang out on the weekends and I was like, sorry, honey, I have to go listen to Stefan Molyneux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. but, but enough about him. Let's stop giving him attention and let's let's, let's, get let's a, move let's, on to people who yeah. are actually important. Yeah, <laughs> like um, like your former boss, Peter Schiff. <laughs> Peter <I'm>, Schiff. <laughs> he's important, and we love him. Um, he is. You know why he's important? I'd like to point out really quickly is that Stefan yeah. Molyneux has a following within the Liberty Movement, but Stefan Molyneux doesn't have as much like doesn't have much of a following outside of the Liberty Movement. Peter Schiff, him on CNBC. Like, 
Right. Like Peter Schiff has has value outside the liberty movement. Um, yeah. And I'm no, I know you're going to get into it, but like I worked for Peter Schiff, and there are people that are not libertarians who invest their money with Peter Schiff. There are people who are libertarians who invest their money with Peter Schiff. But his appeal is bigger than just liberty, and that's so yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's it's broad and it has a lot of crossover, and uh, I just. I, I love listening to him just get laughed at on those shows, and he just plunges ahead like it just doesn't even phase him. He's got a lot of courage. Um, he does. And he's very he does. smart. So how was he as a boss? Was he a good boss? Well, okay, to be clear, I um, so I worked uh, in his L.A. office. I, I started there in, um, in the summer of 2013. So I worked for him for just over a year. And... Um, and so he's in the Connecticut office. So it's not like I spent a lot of time interacting with him except in emails. And in emails, he's extremely short. <laughs> he's very brief. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, but as any good CEO should be. Um, yes. But he, uh, but he was a, he's, it's, it's interesting because my, my, one of my roles was I basically worked for, for a bunch of his brokers and, uh, and specifically on his account. So I dealt with a lot of his clients. And, um, and, and yeah, he's, he's a good boss. He's like, he's, he's running a, like philosophy wise running a tight ship. Like I, I, I love, I love the philosophy of the company. I love, you know, people give him a lot of crap for being a gold bug, especially in Bitcoin communities where they just go like, Oh, you know, like he's just obsessed with gold and other people think he's just obsessed with gold, but he has a really like nuanced in interesting perspective on world economics. And so, you know, uh, it was, it was one of the best learning experiences of my life to see, um, to see how he views the world and the and the, the political spectrum across the world and and the idea that um, you know we we are investing as a company you know we have a diverse portfolio and we invest where capital is treated best and so it was really cool to kind of feel that out and it wasn't just about gold and it wasn't just about like screw the U.S. government it wasn't like any of that it was it was like no this is this is a real um, this is a real place of business where we're figuring out where we can invest people's money and find the highest returns and the best uh, and do the best with people's capital that we can. Yeah, and it's not just gold. He likes agriculture. He likes all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff like oil. Oh, yeah. Energy. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I like what you said about he, he puts people's money where capital gets treated best. That's really smart. Yeah. Um, I, I totally, I was at work and came up with that one day because I was like trying to pitch it to somebody and I, I didn't have my broker's license yet, I, I, uh, but I, I was like, okay, how am I going to sell this to people in the future? And, and so I'm like sitting there with a couple of brokers and I'm like, it's like, we go where capital is treated best. It became my line. <laughs> it totally it's became that line. thing I said at work. It's a uh, good line. I like it. I could make a bumper sticker. It'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, or like a little logo thing. Right. I think, you know, I'll have um, to recommend it to Peter. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he would be smart to listen to you. So so how'd you get the job anyway? Um, so I first encountered Peter in 07 because I volunteered on the 08 Ron Paul campaign. And he was uh -huh. doing like economics advice uh, for, he was the economic advisor for Ron Paul. So I got into his ideas that way. And then in 2010, I, uh, one of his brokers, uh, Neeraj Chaudhry, I got to meet him in Los Angeles, just out of like just random social quasi libertarian function. Um, and we, we ended up like just chatting about the gold standard and, and um, how much we hate the Federal Reserve for a while mm -hmm. and and then we became like fast friends and Neeraj is actually one of my best friends to this day and I worked for him for a while at, at, at Europac but um but it was funny because because uh, basically that was 2010 and then uh, and then probably 2000, 2011 2012 Neeraj was like you have to come work for me at Europac and I'm like what would I do there I've never wanted to work in finance like I mean it's interesting and and he was like, well, you're tremendously detail oriented. You're tremendously good at sales. Like, come, come work and see, see what you can do. And uh, it took him like a, not quite a year, but it took him, it took him a while to, to finally recruit me. And I, uh, I finally said, okay, I'm moving, I'm moving back to Los Angeles and, and I'd be happy for oh. the job. So I took it and, and it was, it was an incredibly good experience. And like, I, the, like the only reason I left was because there's just a, a phenomenal, amazing experience, uh, to be had elsewhere, but 
But what's cool is what I'm working for now is a is a Peter Schiff portfolio company because we raised them a bunch of money and then they stole me away. Um, and then two. How does, how does uh, Peter feel about that? Is, is, is he mad at you for leaving? <laughs> I don't think so. I I wouldn't say that I'm enough on Peter. Like I, I I would I'd like to think I'm enough on Peter's radar that he's like, oh shit, we lost ovens. But you know, like he's got other shit to worry about. Like I, you know, um. I mean, hanging out with him at Freedom Fest this year was really fun, and I can tell you stories yeah. about that. But, uh, I saw but some he pictures, uh, and I was like, "Whoa, that looks like fun." <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, uh, um, fuck, <laughs> the point of this this uh, this line of inquiry is, um, is I, you know, I think that the office was sad to lose me, particularly. Um, but, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm still I'm still going to write for the Europac newsletter, and um, I'm still like heavily interested in Europac, particularly because I'm working for a company that they just invested a lot of money in. So, so you know, it, the, the relationship doesn't end just because I moved on. <laughs> good, that's that's good. Yeah. It's always good to to not have burnt bridges and keep friends and all of that. Um, that's awesome. There's a question here. I don't know if you want to tackle it. Um, I think Why did I stop working for Blue Shift? Um, I'm gonna put this one on the screen. Um, How do I see if you wanna? Let's see. I don't see more questions. What questions are there? Um, it's over here in the question part. Oh, cool! There's question. I don't know how this works. I'm going to let you put that on the screen. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to remember how. I, I know that I know how to do this, but... <gasps> oh, there we go. There we go. There it is. What is the place of what art, is... including fiction, in the liberty movement? How can we increase its prominence in the movement? Do you have thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, lots of people say they got into liberty because of Ayn Rand or... Um, probably a bigger influence for me. Well, <laughs> Ayn Rand was a big influence for me getting into Liberty, but not because I read Ayn Rand, but because my parents did. Um, yeah, so, my parents were objectivists. So, yeah. Yes, and then they were purged from the movement because they were working on the Hospice campaign. Um, the uh, yeah, it's, it's so someone just said Heinlein, and I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Is that is that Heinlein is an incredibly uh, like that, that, that is, that is exactly liberty, liberty and the, the, um, art for liberty. Um, you know, uh, my parents were actually giant, uh, they, they read Rand enough so that in 1975, they named my brother Ragnar, um, after a pirate and Atlas Shrugged. And, uh, and then, um, and then actually my parents were big Robert Anton Wilson and, and Robert Shea fans. So they read, uh, the Illuminatus trilogy. So my, middle brother is named Hagbard after the pirate in that, the main character in that. So thankfully I was this close to being Dagny and I'm really glad I'm not. But I think that <laughs> art, art, including like, including fictional uh, books and stuff has a huge place in, in, in liberty and bringing people to it. But I also think that things like, like art that isn't intentionally libertarian, like the Hunger Games and stuff, mm -hmm. I think it's going to yeah. do it a lot to just kind of increase people's awareness that like government when it has power does things that are bad like that that's it's it's a great lesson for people to learn and you know like i'd love to think people learned it with star wars and i'd love to think people learned it with 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 all these other like kind of dystopian you know the the empire or the or the alliance sort of situations but i think that um i think that more and more there is media and there is art that is kind of depicting that. And I think that libertarians should, I think libertarians should try to go make better, like good art that kind of brings people in, but I think they need to be careful with it. Cause sometimes the art, like no one wants to see through your, 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 uh, your song or your movie or your whatever, yeah. and just be like, it's Oh, this is just sure. you selling libertarianism. Like, no, it yeah. has to appeal it's to be the artistic. Heart yeah. yeah. It is. A, it has to appeal to the heart of people. And I think that, that things like the Hunger Games do and things like, you know, and they're not intentionally libertarian, but we can use them that way. And I think that, that you know, people who have good stories to tell can, can actually really make that vision awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the art has to be put first. You know, it's got to be like a, a top quality artistic product, that, you know, not just a, it, it's got to not feel like propaganda, you know? Yeah. 
we don't want to be guilty yeah, of that. <laughs> people see through that all the time. And it's, it's, it's amazing because it's like, you know, the, the, the ideas of freedom and liberty are, are very inherent in the human spirit. You know, we want to be free to do whatever it is we, we love, you know. And so, so, you know, you tap into love. You tap into, you know, I do sound like Jeffrey Tucker here, but you tap into love and you tap into, yeah, yeah, yeah. into to the, the desire to be free and, and, you know, to make your own choices and, and people... Uh, and people respond to that. And so it doesn't even have to be yeah. about like end the state. Like it just has to be about love yeah. and freedom and, and, and people kind of like, you know, they, 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 they identify that, hu you know, the, the human aspect of it and they, and they identify and they, and they, it grows, you know? I like something, that. Have something you seen human flourish. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> have you seen have you seen the new atlas shrugged movie the part three that just came out i, ha I haven't yet um uh, judd went to the premiere to shoot it of course and and yeah. uh i i had just gotten back from burning man so i wasn't going anywhere um yeah. so yeah, i have I mean, not watched it yet i i honestly i mean i saw part one and uh it was a movie um <laughs> and then part two i started to watch and it looked like a movie as well and part three i saw part of it uh, at like at freedom fest when they when they when they did a, a screening of it and i've wow. heard that it was edited better this time around so mm -hmm. i think that everyone should go see it but i have not yet sp decided to spend my time watching it <laughs> good well maybe we'll leave it there for now we have reached 10 o two ten oh one oh um Seven how was it here. oh 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 yes it's it's not that right there you i know I get, to, I get to town. Go, um, i get to go you know what's funny it's like i could totally go out on the on the town but i'm totally gonna go to judd's house we're probably just gonna watch Battlestar star galactica and be a really boring couple of the sounds awesome <laughs> <laughs> so so how was it be honest was it painful it wasn't no, too bad, was it? No, there was vodka involved. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's why the show is good. It's a lot of drinking. <laughs> is, it, is it officially, is it like, are we doing the Q&A now? Like, Reagan, Reagan Rothbard can come up with more things to ask us about? <laughs> if, if you want to stick around for a few minutes, but I'm sort of done here. <laughs> oh, I mean, we, yeah, we, we, we can stick around for a few minutes if you guys want to. ESG. Your drinking game oh, next sorry. time. Every time we say what misogyny drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There should be a drinking game. There absolutely should. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, I, I treated it as such. Every time I went off on a monologue, I took a sip. Yeah. What yeah, are I'm you most excited thinking. about in the world of liberty now? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, Rachel, you want to answer that first? <laughs> What am I most excited about in the liberty movement right now? Well, um, actually, I'm excited about the campaign that I'm working on. Um, I can give a shout out to Sean Haw. Um, do it, I'm, do it, do it. Yeah, I, I'm his campaign manager, and he's running for Senate here in North Carolina, uh, U.S. Senate. And we actually, in our state, have a, a pretty vulnerable freshman senator, Kay Hagan, who is up for election. And... Uh, the Republican challenger, uh, Tom Tillis, is, is sort of problematic for a lot of people. Um, and and right now they're polling sort of uh, almost dead even by some polls. And then Sean is taking between 5 and 10 percent. So um, oh, wow. he, he's, he's got a, a big opportunity to uh, be important <laughs> in the race, you know, as a libertarian. And uh, awesome. about... about uh, about a month and a half ago, the Washington Post even sent a reporter down um, to interview him in my basement where we make our videos. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that was sort of surreal. You know, um, libertarians Post. in people's basements is kind of yeah. cliche. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Get more cliche than that. But yeah, um, so I've been making videos uh, for Sean where, where he just gives his little two-minute uh, snippets of his thoughts on, you know, one issue per video, and uh, they they've gotten a lot of attention, and um, I, I think it's it's a great way to run a libertarian campaign when you have no budget. Uh, it's just, you know, what does Sean think about 
X. Well, you know, you go to his YouTube channel and he's got like, I think like 25 videos now. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm excited about certain campaigns and the opportunity to, you know, just continue, uh, politically getting our message out and, and, um, sending the message that, uh, in, in my race and this race in particular, if you, if you want to win this race, here's the, you know, five or 10% that you need to do it, you know, convince these people that you're going to, that you understand libertarianism and you can have them, you know, yeah. Sean, I, that's not really a popular thing to say that, that, you know, Sean can't possibly win this race. If enough people vote for him, yes, he could, you know, technically he could, but I, I think it's it's a really important role uh, to have libertarians in races like these, just to to sort of keep them honest and to to sort of hold up, you know, th this is this is your your swing votes. This is what you need, you know. Court these people away from Sean, um, yeah. if you can. <laughs> um, anyway, I I, I'm that. excited. I'm excited that we've got some some good candidates, um, in particular Sean Haw, and I'm going to put his website up here right now. Sweet. I think my excitement is probably in in various student groups like um, like Students oh, for Liberty yeah. and, and oh yeah and they're doing great Street. work. It's funny I um so in 2008 I took a little break from libertarianism I um I was vice chair of the New Hampshire Libertarian Party from uh, 06 to 08 and in um uh, at the in 08 I just like I just couldn't take it anymore I was fucking tired of it and then we nominated Bob Barr and. I base I pretty much protested in a in a thing of like we are not Republican light and then I just like exited stage yeah. and uh, yeah. and so um, and so I actually I took a break from from libertarianism because I've been so involved in the actual in the in the campaign political fight sort of thing and you know I'd, I'd worked on the Ron Paul campaign and then when I like volunteered for Ron Paul there was a bunch of shitty drama because I was vice chair of the LPNH and like people were like but you have to support the libertarian candidate and I was like. Ron's doing good yeah. things, man. Like, I'd like to just, I'd like to see him win the New Hampshire primary, and that so didn't happen. But, um, but I, uh, well, it but it's funny because I took, <laughs> right. so I took, I took a break. I took a break from, from, uh, from libertarianism, like 2008, 2009, or well, 2008 I was still, but then 2009, 2010, I was just kind of like, you know what? For like a year or two, I'm just going to be happy and I'm just going to ignore yeah. the shit. And I couldn't I, ignore I've this shit, there. but, but I, I, yeah, I've done, I, I've done that. I tried. I mean, it's been, it's been my entire life being a libertarian, you know, like, yeah. like my, 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 my childhood was filled with learning that I was on the losing side of like the campaigns. And, and so, uh, which is fucking shitty for morale. I just like to point out, but, um, but, <laughs> but then, but then, yeah, in 2000, uh, in 2008, you know, like after the, the 08, um, after the election, pretty much, I was like, all right, I'm done for a while. And then it took until probably 2011, I got back into it. And then 2012, at Freedom Fest, I encountered groups like Students for Liberty. And I was like, oh, wow, you guys have been doing shit while I've been gone. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's good stuff. It's really, like, it's, it's, it's big tent. It's, it's, it's young people excited about liberty. And, you know, it's taking equally from the left and the right. And that makes me so happy. And so yeah. I... Like, that's what I'm excited about is I'm excited about the fact that, like, there's there's a diversity of ideas in the liberty movement. There's, you know, it's not just all coming from one source. It's not all coming from, you know, it's not just the Libertarian Party. It's not just, you know, like, you know, Rockwell. Like, it's not like any of it's just it's now it's just creeping up everywhere. And like and and we're all coming up with new, you know, there's new ideas. There's old ideas that are being rehashed in a modern society. There's Bitcoin. There's there's, you know, like uh, there's all these different things that are just kind of popping up and being exciting and and we get to just like enjoy that so that's oh look i made him made people excited too Sweet. i'm excited <laughs> not kind of web yeah. no, not i should that kind wear of i should wear <laughs> i should wear a bow tie and i can just be i can be jeffrey Tucker right now i'm like liberty is everywhere and anarchy and chaos make order of everything <laughs> i love jeffrey tucker i love him I know we do. <laughs> he's so he positive too. So he, put a tie, and, he put a bow tie on me at a Freedom Fest. I was so happy. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's pretty awesome. Oh my god, yeah, it was great. I um, <laughs> I got to take Jeffrey so Tucker's picture. I got and I and I black and whiteified it, 
and and he put it as his profile picture. It was, you know, that... like I thought about Judd immediately. I'm like, oh, I got one. I got one. <laughs> that was that was the best part. Is um, Liberty Forum this past year? Uh, Liberty Forum mm-hmm. is the the Free State Projects event that happens in New Hampshire. And I grew up in New Hampshire, and I know the Free State Project well. So Judd and I went up there to shoot Liberty Forum, and Judd gave me his extra camera, and I totally. Um, I totally got to go around and shoot, and I think there were like 700 photos in the album, and like one one tenth of them or so, one eleventh of them was mine. So he like he literally just added all these photos to mine. He's like, I honestly like it was hard to tell which ones were yours and which ones were mine, and 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 I was so proud of myself. And the people were putting them as their profile pictures, and I was like. Judd, I totally know why you do this. This is so awesome. Like, it's like that's mine. I did that. I did that. So no, he's, he does. He, uh, we'll take a moment to go. Judd Weiss does amazing things for the movement, and like, and yeah, I'm very proud of him. Oh, he, <laughs> I have he nothing totally to do with inspired it. it's just me. All I mean, I I was I I was newly getting into digital photography uh, at Freedom Fest. Well, I mean, since January, so about you know just this year. But I mean, like really getting into it, and and he's mm-hmm. given me a lot of inspiration and a lot of directions to go in. And have I you got bought a new a camera Sony because it, yes, it's right. It's, it's right buy a there. Sony. Yes. Here, so right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my Judd Weiss inspired camera. Oh my God! Yes. Oh my god, you have to understand, like, I get to the point where, like, we'll be at a party or we'll be at a conference or anything, and as soon as he starts talking about his camera, I I love his camera, I love his photography, and I love him so much, Uh but I'll just go, okay, I'm gonna go (laughs) over here now and do something else, because he's gonna be going on about his camera at length, so... (laughs) Yeah, I get to see him. I get to see him this week, actually. He's going to be at LPAC, and so am I. So I know. I know. I There's a part of me that really wants to go to LPAC, but I really have other things to do. I have, I have so much to do here. Because my new job is so yeah. time. Like, it's just, it, there's so much work to be done. And then, like, the weekend happens, and I'm like, I just want to sleep and do nothing. Like, I, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I'm directing all operations for, like, a startup company. And I'm like, ah, uh, you know, I spend all day, like, like on the phone with the CEO and the CFO, like sorting everything out. And so I'm just kind of like, I, I just want to, I just want to be at home and watch movies and take care of things at home and not, not like, like, I don't want really to spend like a weekend with a bunch of libertarians right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay. I love you all. That's okay. but, no. <laughs> but have a great time. <laughs> I'll have him give you a hug for me. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see him again and, and trade some notes and show him my progress, hopefully. We'll you see. should. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All you have to do is mention that you got a camera and he's going to show you how to shoot with it. He'll be he'll be psyched. And then and then he'll ask you to start taking photos so he can be like having to take less of them. <laughs> I'll do it. It takes up it. so much of his time. It takes up so much of his time. Are you kidding me? I'll be his second shooter. If he can't do an event, he can send me instead. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we are over by almost 15 minutes, and maybe that's I think that enough. Yeah. Yeah. This is a lot you, of you fun. Have, is... It's 10, 15 there. You have things to do. You have children and stuff. <laughs> I, have to, I have to collapse in bed, I think. Or maybe I have a watch judge. some good. Like, I... <laughs> yeah. Is he there? No, he's. No. I'm actually headed to his house in like half an hour. Okay. <laughs> he's he's about he's All about right. four or four miles that way, and I will see him shortly. Uh, I'll tell him I said hi. Excellent. Um, I will. I love. Yeah. Maybe he's watching. I don't know. Oh, maybe. No, he's totally um, not. He's I, I, I don't even know how to see everyone who's watching unless they say something in chat. So. If I haven't given you a shout out, um, I think Fergus was was watching a little while. Fergus Hodgson, who is he? He's my boy. I love him. I think he just um, sent me a friend request on Facebook. Is that is that oh, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, Am you, I you wrong? You definitely want to be I might... friends with Fergus. Or no, cause... he just sent me a Twitter follow. That's what it was. I don't know. I got a notification of some kind on the phone. You know. He's he's from um, New Zealand. He's got like the most amazing oh. accent ever. Yeah. Oh, so you, you yeah you you want to listen to his his show if he still does one and the best yeah Fergus is awesome he used to live here in uh, Raleigh North Carolina so 
Um, I co-hosted his uh, radio show a couple of times, and that was awesome. Um, Fergus is such a right. sweet heart. Um, I think I think I was recently followed. Yeah, I'm followed. Yep, I see him. I follow you back. Here you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for tonight. And hopefully I will get to do this again. And uh, hopefully you, you will have to have Molyneux on now. You have to be like, yes. you have to be like, all right, you know, for the record, you could argue with him about peaceful parenting for like an hour. It'd be great. Yeah. And you know what? I handled Bill O'Reilly pretty well. I could handle Molyneux. No problem. I think you can. I think <laughs> Bring you can. it. I have faith Bring in it. you. I have faith in your estrogen based, based power. Yeah. <laughs> My, my, my whole, my, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> he, go there. He, he, he said, men don't understand what it's like to, to get benefits because you have a hole. <laughs> I'm like, what? I, oh what? my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hole having oh parasite God. is what he calls. Uh, anyway, no, yeah. we're not going to talk about Molly Any Molly who? <laughs> Molly who? Molly who? Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, from now on, he doesn't exist. <laughs> I, I wrote the article, and I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he wants he to no longer me, exists in my world. You know, I'll take his call. I'll take his call. I, I think that Molyneux done. should be like a, a one-hit wonder, like um, uh, like Alana Miles and that song Black, uh, Blue, uh, Black Velvet. Yeah, that Black one. Velvet, yeah. Well, like, there we go. There was, there was a time, and then it's gone. Yeah. Nobody cares. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that oh. note, we're gonna go. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Good night, everyone. Bye.